Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel here called Flight Script. Today, once again, we're having a look at round two of the 2016 Super Rugby Competition. A review of the last two, three days of action over this weekend. Now we've seen some stunning things in this weekend's action. We've seen some real improvements and started to see some teams who are going to be an influence throughout the season and we started to learn about some teams who are really going to struggle. We got our first real big upset too of the season and plenty more action throughout the last couple of days. Now once again we're going to have a look through the weekend of action, have a look at what my picks were from the preview, see how right or wrong I was and then tally up my points, see how well I did this weekend as well. Okay, so let's kick things underway with our first game of the weekend, which was a cracker to start things off. It was the Crusaders up against the Blues, who were impressive in round one. The Crusaders coming off a narrow defeat. The Blues, a big win over the defending champions, the Highlanders. Now, what we saw in this match was our first penalty try of the season coming from a dominant Crusaders scrum, and that was really the tone for most of this match. The Blues struggled to really dominate anything or get any forward ball off their scrum, of their set piece, anything at all. There was a lot of penalties throughout this match because the Crusaders, they were dominant up front, and they controlled the game with that dominance. The Crusaders controlled the pace, they slowed the game down to how they wanted to play it, and they controlled every little piece of the game. In the second half, their back line come into the fore, mainly one man, which was Namani Nadolo, absolutely smashing the wannabe tackle from lead convert Duffy, the fullback for the Blues. He was, he was massive in the second half, really did lead that team forward after their front row and the rest of the forwards did the job. Arishi Moanga, I thought, had a pretty decent game as well for the Crusaders, despite his very strange kick, a goal that he had hitting it off his shin or high up on his ankle, it seemed, and absolutely blitzing it wide. He did really, that, that was kind of a, a, a come of a bounce of, you know, to put his head down and knuckle down of his goal kicking, because that was a an opportunity that the game was in the balance, you know, and I thought Moanga, after that point, he really stood up and lifted his game from that point for the Crusaders. The Crusaders really controlled that game throughout and they were dominant and they won in the end by 15 points. 28 points to 13. Now my prediction was 24-15 so I was only out by 4 points on one side and a couple on the blue side so I pick up myself 2 points in the opening match which I was very happy about that one. Right, following that game, we headed over the ditch, as they call it, to the Brumbies up against the Waratahs. And this game was really a big one for the Australian Conference as to which would take uh, the crown in Australia because these were easily, and as we found out, by far the two best sides in Australia. And we learned one thing hasn't changed straight off the whistle, and that is Will Scouten is still a meathead. I'm sorry, Anyone out there is a fan of this guy, but he really has not learned any discipline whatsoever. And it's going to hurt him because he's a good enough player to be a wallaby. But his ill discipline is just really getting to a point where it's going to cause trouble big time for him. And he needs to grow up. He needs to grow out of it and really get himself to that next level to become an international player. He got a yellow... Um, no surprise there. There was yellow cards flying throughout this weekend as well. The Waratahs were hammered, absolutely drilled very early on by a penalty count. They just steamed up for the Brumbies. Early points and early chances went to the Brumbies, who took a very big early lead. The Waratahs got their second yellow card as well in the first half, which really did just set the tone for this match and put them in a position where it was going to be extremely hard to come back for them. I thought for the Waratahs, uh, Higgity looked pretty good when he had decent players around him. We've seen him in lesser teams in Australia over the years. And I thought when he came on for the Waratahs, although they were getting outplayed by the Brumbies, just having better players in the back line around him 
it took the pressure off him to be the hero, and I thought he looked actually a lot better uh, than he did in previous season. It was a bit of a topsy-turvy second half. The Waratahs did have glimpses of coming back into this match, and we saw our second scrum penalty try as well going to the Brumbies. I thought Curtly Bell had a dreadful game for the Waratahs, and Stephen Moore once again, I think he's in the form of his life at the moment, was outstanding for the Brumbies. Okay, so the final score on that one was 32 points to 15. My prediction was 28-16 to the Brumbies. So once again, I picked myself up two very, very special points from the Brumbies versus the Waratahs. All right, so that was Friday done and dust. So we moved into Saturday, and it was a daytime match, early evening, call it what you like, at Hamilton between the Chiefs and the Lions. Now this, I think, Turned out to be match of the round, no question about it. The Lions, a good side, and I've predicted uh, in the preview of the season that they'll be one of the better teams to come out of South Africa, but all South African sides generally struggle in New Zealand. But what we've seen here was something quite outstanding. An attacking game that no, neither side really gave two shits about their defence whatsoever. Those tries are plenty. Each team would go just about turn for turn. It was a very tight match. And it was almost like the Lions would score. Then the Chiefs would reply. The Lions would get one back. The Chiefs would hit for another one. It was that kind of match. It just went side to side, end to end. But come the end of the day, the Lions showed that they will be contenders. And we've seen last week in round one, they had a very professional display is what I keep calling it where they did what they had to do to get the win over the Sunwolves, a team that is be fair first time we really saw them in competitive action were unpredictable the Lions, they did the basics well but I think today against the Chiefs, a team we know and seen for years now the Lions come to play and they knew they could develop a game plan and put it into action against the Chiefs. The Chiefs lacks the continuity that they showed a lot more of against the Crusaders in round one. It was a very close game. Neither side was really fully in control of this matchup with the way the game was going. But I thought for the Lions, uh, Elton Yantes was brilliant, as was Skosan as well. Was very good. The back line of the Lions, that's the positions you wouldn't normally expect them to dominate, but it's the work that was done up front against that back row, the likes of Whiteley, Ticklenberg as well. Just phenomenal players and and like has been said already, if these guys do not make it into a Springbok side this season, well, questions must be asked. Especially the likes of Yentes now without uh, a Lambie, who will probably be coming back soon. But we've got that international break in the middle. No Pollard as well. It's going to be an interesting season for uh, the South African side. It was the first time the Lions have ever won in Hamilton. Of course, they're normally the whipping boys of the league, but we've really seen over the last two years now that they have come of age. Now the final score was the Lions with a massive win, 36-32 over the Chiefs. Now I had the Chiefs 38-27, not much of a difference here in the points, but I had the Chiefs down for a win. So our third game of the weekend, I get zero points from that one, getting the result and the margin uh, quite well away from what actually happened. A great win for the Lions and it really announces them as big front runners for the competition following that one we had a replay of the 2015 super rugby final the highlanders at home up against the hurricanes this one in, in prospect had a lot going for it but last week we saw and hurricanes got absolutely destroyed the highlanders got shocked out of the blocks from the blues so it was going to be an interesting match who was going to bounce back and were either of these sides going to be contenders for the season and well we did learn very quickly that these two teams will be there or thereabouts come the end of the year. I think for the Hurricanes, uh, they've got a big problem with Corey Jane. I just don't think Corey Jane is up to the standard anymore when you've got these new blockbuster players coming through. Corey Jane just doesn't seem to be up to speed. He got an intercept very, very early on that an old Corey Jane would have scored. No question about it. He had 80 metres to run. He was normally so fast and so elusive to catch. You would have got him get that try a a 10 out of 10 times. He was mowed up by about three players, not much after halfway by the Highlanders. So I think they got a problem there. He also dropped a little ball 
he was smashed off t tackles as well. Oh, we've seen Osborne had a field day against Corey Jane, just blitzing him with power over the winger. So uh, it's a bit of a shame for Corey Jane, but I think his best days are behind him. He really injury has cost him the best days of his career. I thought Malachi Figatol was outstanding, as predicted. He just blew over the top of the Canes midfield. But the Hurricanes, they still had that ability. They've still got players that can score and make key plays. You know, at the halves, especially Bowden Barrett, very, very good. They've got a decent forward pack as well that's quite good at this level. But at the end of the day, the Canes made a lot of mistakes throughout the, the first 60 minutes of the game. The Highlanders dominated through the midfield, but to their credit, it was quite a tense finish for the Canes. They come back. They led with a few minutes to go. There was controversy with the Ficatile try against the post. Um... That one stopped me. I think it was a try. You know, you put the ball against the base of the post. It's a try. It's simple as that. Uh, question marks about that already. But in the end, the Highlanders did come good. And they came through with a Hayden Parker penalty. Like I said in the preview of the New Zealand Conference, Parker's had a lot of injuries. But he's a good enough player. He's an excellent goal kicker. And he's getting back up to speed as to where he was a couple years ago before his big injury. The Highlanders come out winners 17-16 over the Hurricanes. Now for my score, I had the Highlanders 30 to 20. So I don't get the point for the margin, but I get the point for the head-to-head -head result with the Highlanders taking the win. Then we went off to Australia for the Reds versus the Force. Now, this one was interesting. Now the Reds on paper have quite a few semi-decent players. Players you expect to lead a team around the field. Well, what we've seen from the Reds was anything but the force to the, the fairness of the force were pretty good. They weren't excellent. They weren't outstanding. They weren't going to blow this competition wide apart. They're still going to get beaten nine times out of ten. But the Reds were absolutely dreadful. No direction and attack. They made numerous line breaks, but no support play in sight to really support the man who made the break. Um, that happened about ten times throughout the game. Neither side was, like I said, really any good. But there was a lot of errors throughout the game. The Force, I think, won this game in their back row. Uh, the likes of Hodgson, who once again has been fantastic. But the Reds, they lost it as much as the Force won it. The rush defense of the Force, like I said, was really something that put pressure on the Reds' back line, who really had very little penetration and again it's going to be a long season for the Reds I just don't think they're going to go very well and the way the Rebels have been playing as well I'd expect them now after that performance by the Reds they should quite convincing, convincingly beat them and I don't really see anyone who will lose to the Reds if they keep playing like that you could say the Cheetahs are definitely a lot better the Sunwolves should smash the Reds playing like that. That'll be a good match. wonder if that one's coming up soon as well. But in the end, it was the Force who got a late try to blow the score out. A very good try as well. Crossfield kick to score it. Uh, 22 points to 6 was the final score. Now, I thought the Reds were good enough to win that one and win it convincingly as well. 32-18, I had. Well, wow, boy, I was miles off the mark there. Coming away with 0 points, no winner, no margin whatsoever. There was a little bit of a break between that Reds match and the continuation of the weekend over Saturday night, but we made our way over to South Africa. And what was another very interesting game here between the Bulls and the Rebels. Now, I thought the Bulls should win this one quite easily, and my prediction of 30 points to 8 looked like it could be really on as the Rebels got off to a decent little start, but it didn't take long for the Bulls to really get involved in this match. There was a brief start by the Rebels where they looked on top and they got some points on the board, but what they'll really be disappointed on was their basics, especially Adam Thompson dropping an absolute, well, a sitter. He just had to catch the ball, which he did, run about two meters, if that, and fall over the line. The last defender was gone. He didn't manage to do it. While placing the ball down, he, well, he didn't even get that far. While moving the ball to go downwards, he dropped it absolutely cold. And I think that was a big change in this match. A big turning point for the game. As the Rebels really could have started to put pressure on the Bulls. But the Bulls after that, after about 20-25 minutes, they started to really get into their work. And they just looked absolute class above 
Bjorn Besson getting a hat trick of tries and they just blitzed the Rebels until very late on when there was a few unanswered tries by the Rebels that got them right back into the match for unanswered tries in fact and it showed glimpses of how good they could be if they can put a real 80 minute performance together which by the end of the season we might see from them playing at the high altitude like that it was definitely something that the Rebels seemed to enjoy they played a lot better like that and they put on some good points towards the end the Bulls did come away convincingly 45-25 winners and my scoreline prediction of 30 points to 8 miles off but I did get the winner correct so I take myself one point from that but good display from the Rebels happy with them to really find a way back and uh, the Bulls well they're looking alright too after you know a dodgy sort of start to this season last weekend Right into our second to last match of the weekend. It was the Stormers up against the Cheetahs. Now, I thought the Stormers would smash the Cheetahs after they went down to the Jaguars in round one. And now they had to go and face a team that looked really good in round one. But what they actually got here was a real tense battle between these two sides. So much so, it was actually seven all at half time. The Cheetahs at home showing that they are not to be messed with. They are pretty good at this as well, and they could become the team that may do a few upsets throughout the season. I don't think they're going to really threaten into the playoffs or anything like that, but they're good enough that they could beat a few sides who are, in fact, looking to push for those honours. Once again, I thought the player played very well at fly half, but unfortunately for him, he went off with an injured knee, so... That's not something you want to see. Knees are never, never good. But that is something they won't want to hamper their season too much. Coleman, come on. I thought he played pretty decent off the bench. And what was an interesting battle, I thought, in this match was actually Diego versus Detroit, which was quite big. And actually, Diego picked up a yellow card uh, for a tackle on Detroit, which was very interesting early on in the second half. Now, that could have been very costly as well. But in the end, it was the penalties and the goal kicking, especially of Coleman, who come on and got the kicks late into the half and put the Stormers out to a good 10-point lead, eventually winning it 20-10. A lot closer than I thought. I think the Cheetahs played very, very well in this match, and they'll be a threat. You don't want to go to South Africa and play the Cheetahs at home, that's not what you want to do. The Stormers, though, they played well enough to come away with the win. I picked 46 12 to the Stormers. I wasn't far off the Cheetahs score, but I'll still pick up the one point for picking the right winner. Okay, our final match of the weekend was the Sharks at home to the Jaguars. And this is a game I thought the Jaguars could fancy themselves to do, but I think their team's still learning about the Super Rugby thing, which is no surprise either. But the way they're picking up yellow cards has to be a concern. Once again, they were down to 13 men at one stage, picking up two yellow cards within three minutes of each other. That really did hamper their chances. you got to think, if they didn't concede all these yellow cards, how well would their season be going so far? But you got to give them credit, though, down to 13 men. They still scored a try through Santiago Cordero, who was playing at fullback for this match, but it was a tight game. And two yellow cards, even one yellow card, can decide a match like this that is really that tight. I think the Jaguars need to learn discipline very fast. They need to cut those cards out. I know it's hard to say because there's a lot of yellow cards throughout the weekend, almost one per match like we've seen. Uh, through recent years of rugby, but we need to cut this out. So many cards in every single match. The Jaguars, they need to cut out the cards. They need their discipline. The Sharks, to their credit, they held their nerve, and they did get the win. Joe Peterson played very well, and I think he's filling in that number 10 jumper quite well in the absence of Lambie. But we've seen once again that the Jaguars are not to be taken lightly. They've only played away... But they've just about won two out of two. Sure, a very tight win in their first match and a very tight loss in their second match. But they're showing that if they can clean up these yellow cards and, you know, just develop themselves around this competition, they are definitely good enough. We know they're good enough. 
and they're going to be a threat. I don't think any team in this competition will play the Jaguars and expect to win. They are good enough to beat any side in this league so far, uh, the way they've played and the players that they have, provided they don't get too many injuries and stuff like that. The Sharks, uh, final note on the Sharks, I think they are proving to be one of the better sides along the Lions out of South Africa, the Stormers as well. And to their credit, the Bulls playing very well as well. I thought South Africa looked pretty weak uh, overall, you know, with all their teams involved. We didn't see the Kings this week, and I think they're a team that will struggle. But, you know, the Sharks are looking good. And it's going to be a really nice and interesting conference. The Sharks and the Jaguars in the same conference group. The return league at that will be quite interesting. So my prediction for that match was 29-25 to the Jaguars. What actually happened was 19-15. My margin was perfect. I picked it to be uh, four. The difference, and it's come out four. I was just quite a few points off. I had a two in the front instead of a one, but the winner also was incorrect, so I don't pick up any points whatsoever for that match. So throughout this whole weekend, I've picked myself up seven points from the eight matches, five for the head-to-head -head, uh, results, and two bonus points for getting within 10 of the actual score. I was nowhere near getting an actual score completely correct, but still seven points in the bank, which puts me up to 17 for the season so far, which, I don't know, how decent is that? With comparison with uh, one of the comments to come through with their own predictions from TGI321, and he has picked himself up four points from the eight matches, and oh, I have to feel sorry for you because there was a lot of matches that you were extremely close to getting that bonus point for being within 10. I think two or three of them, you were within one point. So you had 11 points difference. Uh, matches like the Force to be the Reds, uh, predicted 12-7, where it was 22-6. 11 points, the difference. That is that is very brutal, very harsh as well. Like the Highlanders and the Hurricanes, not much difference there either. 11 points between your prediction of 27-17 and 17-16 that actually happened. So almost, but not quite there. Four points coming in from TGI 3 to 1. So if you have your own thoughts about uh, the results and who you think is going to win, uh, get involved for the next round, round three. I'll have a preview video coming up around midweek this week, having a look at the action coming up from round three of Super Rugby. My thoughts, my predictions, and see how many points I can muster in the third round of the competition. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Hope you've enjoyed this review of the weekend's action. I'll be back in next week for a look at round three. So get your thoughts and have your say about what you thought of the weekend's matches in the comments below as well. And I'll see you all next time. Until then, thanks for watching and take care.